we live in a world where we multitask. We uh, do things on automatic pilot without full awareness of what we're doing. If you're driving, say, and daydreaming about what you're going to have for dinner or a conversation you had with somebody, uh, all kinds of things will go on around you that you'll be completely unaware of. We can eat breakfast and watch TV at the same time and be totally oblivious to the taste of the food that we're eating. So mindfulness is the opposite of that. It's a conscious, intentional um, choice to be present. John Kabat-Zinn defines mindfulness as paying attention in the present moment, on purpose, non-judgmentally, as if your life depended on it. A second, more compact definition attributed to Krishnamurti is conscious, affectionate awareness of the moment. The short definition, if you wanted to give it a definition, is moment-to-moment, non-judgmental awareness. So if we think about the opposite of it, mindlessness, it's like it's the to-do list every day that we run down, we run through our busy lives without really engaging in our lives. There's this quality that's kind of absent. When you get done with your day and you think, gosh, I did a lot of things, but how aware of all the things that I did was I during my day? Mindfulness to me is this quality of attention that I bring to my life. And it's a quality that underlies every single thing that I do. I take a shower, I notice the shower. I notice the temperature of the water, where it's falling on my body. I notice the smell of the shampoo. The opposite of that experience would be hopping in the shower and planning the meeting that you're about to go to. So you don't feel the water, you don't smell the shampoo, you don't notice that you might need to scrub your leg down there because you have some dirt on it from gardening. Nah, all those details just fall away, they, they go unnoticed. You can look at um, the carpet, you know, the carpet in this room is, a, is a, you know, a tan color and you could say it's a tan colored carpet. Well, if you don't really look very closely, that's true. If you actually get down there and look at the fibers, it's made up of all of these multicolored fibers. And it's all kinds of colors, from blue to gray to black to, to white. And together, when not really examined, they look tan. So we're talking about bringing attention to the experiences of our lives with that same level of clarity to see what's actually there. John kabat says, the little things, the ordinary things, they're not little to practice, for example, mindfully taking the trash out, mindfully slicing a tomato, bringing your attention to what you're doing in that moment. Have one dinner where everyone mindfully eats what's on their plate, smelling, tasting, experiencing the relationship between the movement of their body and the food, mindfully brushing your teeth in the morning, Anything can be done with mindful attention. It's a conscious choice to bring the mind and the body into the same place at the same time. There's formal mindfulness or meditation practices, and there are informal ones. You know, you happen upon a beautiful sunset, and you pause. Stop moving, which is so hard for us. And maybe just take a breath. Feel the breath in the body and tune into the sunset. Notice if you start to say, oh, what a beautiful sunset. Or I remember last year when I saw one that was even bigger. It was gray, you know. This one's not quite as good. Can you just be with that sunset and really soak it up? That moment. That moment. And then move on. All of these details, these 
these details that have the potential to show us so much more of our lives, the fullness, the qualitative beauty of our lives. Much of that just is wasted on us because we're so busy, we're so engaged with the mind, we're so thinking about what we need to do or what we didn't do. I can still get everything done that I need to do. I've got a meeting. Well, when I'm in that meeting, am I engaged with the people I'm in the meeting with? Am I noticing them? Am I seeing them? Am I, am I listening to them? Or am I thinking about what I need to do after I leave the meeting? How engaged am I in the moment? I mean, mindfulness really is just bringing our awareness to whatever our experience is in a really simple, fundamental way. Just noticing how our feet feel on the ground and how our body feels in the chair and what it feels like to take a deep breath and let our shoulders relax and how it feels when I'm looking at you and uh, how I respond to the things that you say, how I respond internally, if there's contraction or if there's ease or comfort. Um, mindfulness is noticing the emotions that come up, like anger or fear or frustration or sadness or grief or happiness and excitement and calm and contentment. Noticing those things in a way where we're really embracing all of our experience and not being, le being overly reactive to it. And from embracing it and just noticing it, actually we have a richer experience of it and, um, and more influence on what, what, what that emotion and what those thoughts and what those experiences are doing to us. While it sounds a bit cliche, moments are all we have. This moment, this moment right here is the only one in which we can do anything, accomplish anything, plan anything, remember anything is in this moment. But we often find ourselves off in other moments. Choices can only occur in the present moment. It's the only time we ever have to make a choice is right now. And if our mind is wandering off into the past and into the future, because we have limited attention, we may be missing a lot of the choices that are actually right there in the present, missing being able to see them. And we have the inner wisdom to know what to do. When we can actually see the situation, we know without predetermined ideas about how things are, without stereotypes, but in actuality of experience, we have options, possibilities that we wouldn't have seen if we were just on autopilot. We wouldn't see that we have options because our brain just tells us, go this way, do this, and we do. So it's always just coming back to any moment. You just kind of keep dropping in and dropping in again. We're building that mindfulness muscle of the brain, and it can be done, you know, whenever you have um, the realization that you've, you've disappeared. Our minds are habituated to wander away. But through this practice, we can bring ourselves back to the present. You go on a walk, are you noticing the sounds, the colors, the air? Or are you focused on the fact that you need to get your oil changed and as soon as you'll get home, you make sure you get in the car and get down there and get that done? We can still plan. But we cannot usurp, we, can, we, can, we, we don't stand the danger of usurping the quality of our lives with that planning, that planning mind, that doing mind. The mind wanders off. That's what the mind does. To wake up at the moment that you become aware that the thoughts have drifted off and choose to bring your attention back gently with kindness, uh, like a puppy that you're trying to train to heal and it's bouncy and exuberant. And if you are harsh with the puppy, the puppy doesn't learn. Uh, you can always, always come back to the moment. You know, however mindless you may have been, you know, maybe for days. And, and it may be that um, the moment you come back to is way down the line. But when you come back, it's like, oh, here I am.
We are doing and we're just reacting. We're on this automatic pilot kind of place all day long, just boom, 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 boom. And it is really the exception, the radical act, when someone steps out of that and says, what's going on for me? And, and when we answer that question for ourselves, how do we answer it? Do we answer it with, oh, you're such a slap. You, should, you shouldn't be doing that. You should be full of energy. You should be, you know, happy. You shouldn't be having these feelings. But maybe there's another little bird on that other shoulder that could say, I hear you. And it's okay. It's good that you're just checking in and feeling that, right? Is there some help you need around that? Do you need to call a friend? Do you need to see a doctor? Do you need to go on a run? Do you need to have some water? Do you need to eat something? I mean, it could be as simple as that, right? These little feelings of imbalance. But just how often do we check in? And when we check in, how are we checking in? Is there any self-compassion there? Or is it filled with judgment? It's a, a, a process, a lifelong process. And just being day to day, being here, um, you know, your whole life is the whole practice. And, and how you learn to respond to the stuff that's thrown at you. Um, and, you know, and so you've got opportunities to be mindful every moment of the day. Mm -hmm.